understanding the basics of cables production. I don't see why a cable should not last for more than a year. I doubt. It's science and it's, it's uh, production. The minimum it should serve is nearly one year. That's minimum. And that's what we would be like, you know, you know, even have some cables that you can't even try to kind of try to do like this, to pull. Because if the moment you try to pull, you just mess everything. Maybe you are using it with your phone, you try to wake up and then you mess it. But our cables can even try to, to pull it. It's, we have tried, this machine is very core, sophisticated when it comes to testing. It does a lot. And even as we also do some kind of testing, try to pull, do everything, just to ensure this thing is, uh, it's perfect. Basically, when, uh, when I started this idea of cables, I had an option. Should I start producing mobile phones and then the chargers and the earphones? I had to weigh the options. as like, it's a good idea, but for me to be able now to hack building mobile phones, I would take long. So what should I do? What I would do, I think I would start with accessories and then I finish with the end product. So accessories, let, because the earphones are behaving the same. So I say like, let me start with chargers, USB cables. The market is big. Once I'm done with the chargers, I'll do earphones. That's by start of year 2023. I'm giving myself a, a span of one year because I've had this within one year. So by 2023, I start the earphones. And by the start of 2025, that's the time I'll be assembling phones. In general, I'll be building manufacturing company of mobile phones by starting with accessories because uh, um, I'm one of the guys who is very slow but sure. You know, in that field that you want to venture in, you need to understand that market very well. You need to understand all the legal requirements very well. And then when you are jumping into that, you never have problem with anyone because you, you, you did your research very well. There is nothing that you skip. And anything that you skip, it will find you as a supplies and you'll be very open to embrace it. Like, yeah, I didn't know about this, so it's okay, I will just comply. So, but doing like 80% knowing like, you can manufacture a product here, which is not CAPS approved. Even manufacturer needs to know that. So if you know kind of those aspects before and you act on them, it'll be good. And the other thing is like, you need to have the kind of the light mentorship. Those people who, who adds value, okay? And those people who are in the industry, those people who, if you tell them, this is what I'm thinking, they can see three years ahead than you and tell you, I have a friend of mine who did exactly what you are thinking. This is how it ended. So can you try to, to change the course? I mean, not having those people who salute you, who give you the light mentorship, you never, you never make a mistake. Unless now, if you make a mistake, you're not an individual mistake. It will be a team mistake. You are a big team, but you never thought of this. So you don't term yourself as a failure. So you work towards now. We are in this situation. How should we get out of this? The insecurity has to come because, you know, we have other counterfeit products. So you might get someone go there, produce the same, same product in probably in China, come and flock our market, Probably with a substandard cable bearing all our identities just to destroy our market. Okay? So there are those kind of fears. So might even find someone who's building something and selling, keep claiming that this is a total side product. So you know, although I'm very confident with the with the government agencies mandated to to check on the counterfeit products, because it's a challenge everyone's fear. Because you normally find like someone with a it's something we call false advertisement. You, you go and buy something like a, a good example, like a, a product is Totosai, but someone is producing the name Totosai, so there is no eye at the end. But as a buyer, you just see like Totosai, ah, this is a product, but you didn't check this are counterfeit because our real name is this, this is not a full name. I believe you have seen those products with, with that name. So those are counterfeit and it's a, it's a very hard to, to build those things, but uh, we, we look forward to having the government counter counterfeit agency sorting us on this thing. Yeah, but it's, it's a big problem with all the manufacturers. It's a big problem. Basically, all our products have a company name, Totosai, in front, and at the back, we have a map of Kenya. So that's how you differentiate our products. Map of Kenya, T 
telling you there's a product made in Kenya and on the front you have going to have uh, our total sign name. However, we are looking forward if we can be able to work with people like Safalco. You know, when working with the Safalco, we can be able to tell Kenyans you can only buy our products from a Safalco shop. So if you go out there and find it being sold in a, in a kiosk somewhere, please give us a call. That's counterfeit. You'd also be interested, how did you guys get our product? Because you only this stock at Safalcom shops. That's the only way to beat counterfeit. Because there's no way you can just go and import a substandard cable bearing our identities, and then you sneak it inside a Safalcom shop. So that kind of the only way you can guarantee. But also if we can have like, um, like little shops or supermarkets just selling made in Kenya products. So whoever has a made in Kenya product, we have like a certain supermarket. We can only sell them. If not there, you can get it anywhere. So like uh, something like maybe supermarkets approach, like we have a special corner for made in Kenya to avoid any counterfeit. So you can just tell a person, go and buy in the supermarket. If you find it anywhere else apart from that, don't buy it, that's a counterfeit. So that's only something that can even now uh, give us more safety that our product will not be counterfeited any other time soon. However, regardless of that, our products have been registered at uh, Kenya Industrial Properties Institute for trademark and industrial design. So even thinking of going to go and do counterfeit, and doing it at your own risk, the law will still caught up with you. The average cost of a USB cable when you are doing a market survey because the original cables I was giving them to to the to the retailers, I was even asking them a question like like a buyer, how much are you willing to buy this product made in Kenya? So I could pick a pattern, and most of them were between 200 and 250 Kenya shillings for micro types. Either were comfortable with 300 and iPhone 500. That was the market survey for these guys. So our cost of production of one micro USB cable goes at 160 shillings. That's VAT inclusive. So if someone buy it and sell it at probably one, a distributor buys at 160, tells at 170, another person buys, sells at 180, so you as the end user, it will reach you at 200 or 250. The same, same cost you are buying an imported USB cable that is frustrating you. Type C we normally produce at 170 shillings, VAT inclusive as well, and iPhone 180 shillings VAT inclusive too. So we can say our product is even way cheaper than some of the imported, import, imported products. My idea of happiness is when uh, you go to a social media and uh, you find someone saying, okay, uh, randomly, someone say like, ah, the, I love this guy's product. I have been using this guy's product and they have not frustrated me. It's normal like, that's the feeling, okay? You find like someone asking someone in a group, he or she is looking for a good, iPhone charger or whatever. And then you said someone in the comment box just posted our product. You can buy from these guys. I bought from them and I can't regret. I think that's that's the happiness I because seeing like we are really doing something there. We are serving customers because we are not in the business of making money but creating value. And when you see someone talking positively about your product and even like just questioning them, can you link us with them? Blah blah blah. That's the ideal of happiness to me. Basically, when uh, Sakaja and other key public figures posted our, our, our products, it gave us a, a lot of visibility because now I can say comfortably 40%, if not 60%, or 100% of Kenyans knows that there is a company in Kenya called Totosai that manufactures USB cables. It's only that. They have not been able to get the products in the areas. So it gave us a lot of visibility and a lot of uh, flea marketing. Everyone knows about our products. So if you move in town wearing our dust coats, the name Totosai, we are guaranteed in, if we pick 10 people at Ladom, they will tell us, we know you guys. You know the guys doing ABCD. So as a business, it, it was a game changer. A lot of visibility and uh, it also helped us to get some people who want to, to buy our products. You have even gotten orders from people in Sierra Leone, Botswana, Uganda, Nigeria, who want to be the distributors there. But again, we can just set a product. We have also to check other compliance like custom. So how much does it cost me to sell this product to Botswana? How much custom is it? No, you have to do all those aspects. So the market is big, which is came with 
cutters of uh, that uh, public visibility. And uh, it was a game changer. Me and the, my team have learned a lot of stuff. Uh, we have learned out of being patient because we have done this for long. We are just building pro pro products and keeping them there. We have also learned like risk taking pace. I have risked a lot of money in this business and it came to pay. So risk always pays, patience, and always, I mean, working on your goals. But risk, risk is the key. You got to risk to achieve what you want. I have risked a lot in everything. Those people who want to, to start what I'm doing, I can only give you a few advices. One, you have to, to work on your dream. So you, no matter what comes along, don't get disrupted. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. It's never quick. It's not easy. They are seeing me now because they saw me last week. But they don't know the journey started in 2013. So nothing comes easy. Don't expect to jump in one or two years you have hacked it. Some does. It's good luck. But you are not some. So it, it takes time. So And don't give up. Uh, having a light mentors is very important. So getting someone who will seek advice, okay? Obvious one plus one is two. But it's always good to consult from someone. Maybe it changed from yesterday and you didn't know. So make sure you have someone you kind of consult. Don't make like this a very light decision, something I can make my own, especially in business. Doesn't work all the same. So in business, one plus one is not two actually. Unless you consult with one, two, two three, four, five, and then you see the pattern. They are all both saying the answer is two. And those mentors are someone who knows stuff, who have been in industry. Don't get a mentor someone your age. Get those people who have been in industry. There was this or mama who can give an advice. And also now it comes to like in, in government, something like they can also help us to as young entrepreneurs and industrialists to go. Uh, high cost of taxation is very high. Like we pay 16% VAT. A big company that has been existing for that 40 years pay the same VAT tax. Like for us, we are starting, we need like probably not free tax because this is our country, we want to build the country. We don't want to be, not to pay tax at all. But probably a start of probably 3 to 4% per, per year. So maybe this year I'm paying VAT 3%. Next year VAT 5%. Within a span of probably 5 years, I'll be have grown. And now I can even now tell the government, I think I'm comfortable subjecting me to 16%. But starting the 16% at this stage, everything is going to, to on the other side. I like building the business. That's why you find most of the manufacturing businesses die way, way below. So you need to kind of have a kind of a, a formula for, for taxation. You start through, it increase gradually. And that's the only thing that, uh, that helps us at all as, uh, as entrepreneurs and everyone who wants to start a business out there.